Hey everyone, we are about to go live to talk about orthotics, foot problems, knee problems, hip problems, just general problems, but all related to the use of orthotics and what we think about them. We've had a really good discussion coming up soon. So tune in, we're gonna be going live real soon. So you want to know all about orthotics, or more importantly, are they good or are they bad? We've had some really good discussions in our UMS online coaching tribe uh, about orthotics, asking some good questions, and we want to uh, open up a discussion so that we can help educate you on our opinion on orthotics, whether they're good or whether they're bad. Now make sure you stick around because as always, we're going to answer some really good questions, and we're going to talk about uh, a couple of key insights related to uh, the use of orthotics. All that and more coming up. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image. Hey everyone, in case we haven't met, my name's Rad Burmeister. I'm one of the co-founders of Unity Gym and co-creators of the UMS, the Unified Movement System, where we take driven people and turn them into superhumans. And the astonishing results that we get with our tribe come from a balance in our program of strength and flexibility. And if you wanna know how, to, uh, how we do that, then you can actually download uh, the Flexibility Blueprint, which is a free download. There's a link in the description of this video. Now, as always, I have the legendary Phil White with me. How are you doing, Phil? Very well. Uh, hardly recognizing myself yeah, today man. as I've um, oh, shaved off the beard. So yeah. it's all for Movember. In November, I'm going to be growing my mustache out. There's a bit of a you know awareness and a fundraiser for, for men's health, particularly prostate cancer, testicular cancer. And the big one for me is the mental health side of things. It's um, just so common in like, working in healthcare. You get uh, just so many people who are a bit macho and they don't want to talk about their feelings, but really it's a, it's a big issue for them. So it's just a bit of a awareness thing. Yeah. So my most starts to grow out and if you feel like donating, then you can head to the link in my Instagram page. There's a link in the bio and you can donate for a really well worthy cause. Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah, it's, I don't know if it happens anywhere else in the world, but this happens every year in Australia and uh, it is a good cause. If you look at the statistics of suicide uh, rates, five times more men commit suicide than women. If you look at the amount of people that are on uh, antidepressants, I think it's like one in four now. Yeah of adults are on huge. antidepressants yep. it's, it's just massive so mental health is a real um issue so yeah uh donate to phil's uh movember cause and uh put your money yeah, to something just to, so to much face yeah. <laughs> so weird man when yanni and me yeah, saw well, you on facebook at first and yanni was like who's this dude coming up on my feet? <laughs> yeah. it's pretty funny anyway absolutely 
So we've had a good discussion. The whole purpose of today's show is that in our UMS online coaching program, a couple, uh, one of our tribe members, I um, can't remember who it is, Yanni, do you know who it was that asked the question originally? I absolutely do, and I've got them here. It was Sarah Ricinos Raldar. Sarah Ricinos Raldar asked the question originally, and I hope I'm, uh, I hope I'm saying that um, correctly. What I'm going to do uh, whilst I'm talking, I'm just going to bring up the question. I should have done this before so that I can read the actual question. Yeah, and it's also come up in, within the gym itself with some of the members in here um, using orthotics and it's just such a common question that you know you're always always coming across so thought it'd be a good one here so if you have any experience with using orthotics yourself it's been if it's been an option for you and you've taken it you haven't or if you you know grew up using them use them after an injury like let us know what your experience is like and um yeah yeah absolutely and and also as always if, if that, for those of you that are watching please hit the like button and comment with your name and where you're watching from so that we can give you a shout out and also so that you can help us with the youtube algorithm so we can get this content out there so i'm going to read the question real quick this is this is what uh spawned us to do this so sarah racinos ralda has said hi yanni and rad what's your take on flat feet and orthopedic sole padding to correct them, AKA orthotics. Uh, I was told running barefoot is the best, but a problem is uh, in winter time. Then another therapist said, since the feet uh, affects your whole skeleton, you'd be running in the bad position without correcting anything. So I'm confused. How important are flat, uh, are flat feet or in general feet for one's posture, etc.? Uh, they're very important. They're uh, critical <laughs> to um, to good posture and for the rest of your skeleton. So I'm going to start off by saying that running bare feet is like someone saying how good is bench pressing for your shoulders. Bench pressing is great for your shoulders. How good is it for you if you've never done it before and you've got a uh, sh chronic shoulder injury or impingement? could possibly be one of the worst things that you could do. It could make it uh, way worse. So r saying that running bare feet is good, is uh, it's good for the right person. It's good if you've worked up to it and you've done some other work. It's good if that's the right exercise for you to be doing right now. What are your thoughts, Phil, on that? Yeah, it's something that um, I guess that question really hits home for me and my personal experience. And that's what today's episode is going to be about us just talking about our own experience with orthotics and then throughout the week we we'll probably get should into talk doing that, some, yeah. uh, getting into more like exercise, the things you can do to help it. Um, and hopefully, fingers crossed, getting a podiatrist on board, a good mate of mine um, who can yeah really talk to the, the, the latest science behind it all. But for today, yeah, my personal experience, I've gone through a very similar thing. So um, my mum has very flat feet, my dad has very arched feet, and my sister got the beautiful arched feet and I got the flattest of the flat, just like my mum. Um, but yeah, all throughout my life, I was uh, really keen into sport, and, and um, especially in, in running sports. And um, yeah, I, I was like, after having a little bit of heel pain, like, because I was growing pretty fast, I was whisked off to a podiatrist and he said like, oh, yep, you need orthotics, you've got flat feet. Did like, um, you know, put me in the mold. And then for just years and years, I was just put in, um, yeah, like they were what, like seven hundred dollar orthotics every couple of years. My feet were growing fast, you know. You just <laughs> and you're just told like you have flat feet, therefore you know you need these to correct that position, um, which you know I, I didn't know any better. My my parents didn't know any better as a kid. But then yeah, it got to the point where I was a teenager and I'd like go to the beach and I would not be able to walk on the sand at all because I just did not have the strength in my feet to walk um, without the orthotics. So uh, I kind of got annoyed with that, thinking like you know humans like have been around for a while and haven't had orthotics for a very <laughs> for that whole time so you know it's quite likely that there's uh something i could be doing here to get rid of an eye pr i probably went too hard the other direction and i went like i got read about barefoot running and got quite into that idea and um uh and as with everyone who's tried it would attest to when you get into it and you go too hard you're just going to get the most calf pain you've ever experienced in oh your my life God. <laughs> Man, when i was in the army i knew yeah. nothing about barefoot running yeah. but all of a sudden i came to sydney one day yeah. and everybody was training in vibrams and yeah. they made sense to me and yeah, i bought yeah, yeah. into the hype and no, i'm not saying it's a bad thing i really i mean yeah. we're training barefoot every day at unity gym um so i do believe in it absolutely but i bought into the hype i bought myself some 150 dollars vibrams yeah. and uh got back to the army wore them to work and we went on our first run and it was uh, eight kilometer run. Oof. 
And uh, I had such bad calf pain and DOMS that I literally could not walk for about five days afterwards. And uh, when I mean is. I could not walk, I mean I was virtually crippled. Yeah, it is um, unlike regular running. Yeah, pain. it's totally <laughs> it's so different. Bad. Because you can't strike the ground with your heel when you run bare feet. If you do, you're going to run into real problems. So you've got to strike the ground with your toes, which is totally different to the running stride of the untrained runner who runs with runners. We naturally strike with our heel because that's the way we walk. And when you run, run with runners, they cushion that so you don't feel it. Um, that's what I experienced anyway. Yeah, and basically just a bit of the kind of biomechanics behind it as well. If you've got a big heel there, then you're going to be in a slightly more plantar flex position. So your foot's going to be pointed down a little bit more constantly. And so that means that when you're running your Achilles, so your calf muscles, when they, it goes down, uh, forms your Achilles tendon, which attaches onto your heel. Um, when you're in running shoes, you never get your um, go into as much dorsiflexion, so your toes pointing up, which means you're not getting as much of that stretch on your Achilles. So when you're running in and you you're, have had a lifetime of running in running shoes, then you're never kind of going into that same length. And so, you know, in every kind of video we've talked about is like your body, you know, gets used to what you spend your time doing. And if you've got to strengthen through total range, if you want to access that range. And so what barefoot running does is suddenly you've just got that much more rain and your range and you're putting a whole lot more load through it. So if you're not prepared for it, it's going to be bloody Agony, painful. Agony, <laughs> yeah, and that's what I learned. And I learned afterwards uh, that you are meant to periodize your barefoot running and you're meant to surprise. progressively overload. <laughs> surprise, surprise. So you're meant to start with like a, a walk, walk and then build yeah. up to a, like a one kilometer run and then blah, 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 blah from there. So before we go deeper, I'll let you know my experience with orthotics because Phil and I have both got very different um, experiences. I, unlike Phil, have beautiful arches in my feet. Very, very check lucky. Check them out. Uh, check them out. So <laughs> it could be genetics, but it could also be that I had a childhood up in the bush where we virtually didn't wear shoes for anything. Um, so it's probably a combination of the both. Yeah, I'd uh, say that like I also, I barely ever wore shoes as a small child. So it's like, it is mostly genetics when yeah, it comes down well, to it. And well, ligament laxity as well. So some people have very naturally tight ligaments. I've got, I'm sort of on the spectrum of a hypermobile sort of looser mm. ligaments. And so yeah. we'll get into the anatomy of the foot later, but the ligaments that hold your foot together are like, are also developed. Yep. Like, yep. Like that. Anyway. So, um, so what happened with me when I was 20 years old, I had uh, probably the most life-changing injury that I'd had. Uh, definitely at the time, the only thing that would come close to it is what I did in my shoulder, which is I tore something called the Liz Frank ligament. And um, I, Richard, can you see my foot there on the <laughs> camera or no? So the Liz Frank ligament is the ligament that holds the big toe onto the second toe at the apex of your foot, which means the way that your the way that your foot sorry there you go so it's right in there okay right there so the apex of your foot if you imagine if this is my foot so here's my big toe uh, sorry here's my big toe second toe and my little toe isn't even on there but from here when you step down onto the ground if you jump and put pressure through your toes. The, the majority of the pressure comes through that Liz Frank ligament there. That's what takes the majority of your weight. So what happened is I did a complete tear, which means where my foot is held together at that point, it was com it was just moving like that. If this is my big toe and my second toe, it's meant to be like this. No good. And here's your ankle here, but it was just going like that. It, and it was really amazing because I was in complete shock. I couldn't feel a thing, but I was pumped with adrenaline. And I stood up and went to walk. And you know how they say, if you don't have a big toe, you can't walk? It's true. Because I went to walk and I fell inward and my big toe just went like that and yeah. I just went oh my god and about five minutes after the adrenaline wore off I was in some of the most excruciating pain yeah. I've ever been in so anyway I had reconstructive surgery they put a screw in my foot and held it back together and I was in uh, I was hobbling around in crutches for um, three months uh, and then after that I was given orthotics and I was given two pairs of orthotics because they asked me what I do and I told them at the time I was a performer I was a stuntman at Fox Studios so I needed a pair that had like a like foam cushioning on top. So there was the orthotic at the back and then foam, like an inner sole basically. And any shoe that I wore, I had to pull the inner sole out and, and this would replace it. But then I had a second pair, which was only the heel because the other thing that I did regularly was martial arts. And I wore these martial arts shoes, which are very similar to the martial arts shoes you can still get today. Um, and they didn't really have a sole in them. So it had to go in there. And I wore them for probably about 12 months. So that's my experience with orthotics. Yeah, and that's, I, I think what it kind of comes down to is this um, idea that like, you know, orthotics should be used just like any other kind of medical brace you use in your body. That's how I, I see it. And we'll go into sort of the research behind it a bit later in the week. But, you know, just thinking from a, you know, totally rational side of things, like, you know, humans have been perfectly capable of, of living a, you know, healthy life with, you know, 
any type of foot you have, just you know, club foot and other issues, yep. obviously. But um, yeah, if you spend your time getting uh, your foot strong without orthotics, then I can't see why you know you suddenly need just for this issue to constantly have an arch in your foot. Now the issue is that like obviously human life is pretty different now to mm -hmm. how it was before. So um, if you're spending most of your day sitting and you're not giving uh, your foot much load to deal with, then it's yeah, not going to adapt to it. We live longer now than we ever have before. Yeah. So, things. but I think if you're when you're if you're talking to a podiatrist or a doctor or a chiro who might be pre prescribing you these orthotics, just have a chat to them about like, is there an exit plan for this? Yeah, like, yeah, that's right. <laughs> is there is it part of like if you know people don't wear uh, like knee braces after getting a um, you know if they have like their knees coming in, they don't wear that for the rest of your life. Like it's all about strengthening up the supporting structures so yeah. you can be healthy long term. So just like that with orthotics, I think there's it. It is a useful tool to get over short-term pain, but you've got to have an exit strategy with, you know, are you strengthening up your feet and, you know, what are you getting yourself back yeah, doing? Yeah, so. absolutely. And you know what? Um, so uh, I'm just looking over here. So Quok uh, has tuned in and says, Dr. Phil looks 20 years younger. He does, <laughs> doesn't he, man? Yeah, I didn't recognize him at all. And thanks for tuning in, brother. Thanks for commenting, as always. And uh, you're also saying, damn, I'm guessing that's uh, to the description foot of my injury. foot injury. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was nasty, man. It was a really nasty one. And, and when it happened, I was doing an acrobatic movement from Kung Fu. And when I landed on my foot, um, a friend of mine, Aaron, uh, was, uh, was there. We were training together in the park. And when I landed, there was a god awful tearing sound. It sounded like denim tearing. Like it was Oof. like de it was like a jeans going <laughs> like it was so loud. And Aaron was about 20 meters away from me in an outdoor park. And I looked up at him and I said, did you hear that? And he looked at me and went, and I just went, oh, fuck, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it was nasty, man. Um, OK, so yeah, look. You can see this is going to be a week long topic as it always is where we are where I'm looking at the time now and we're, we barely, we've barely even scratched the surface here. We haven't even we're really just introducing what we're going to be talking about and we've only got five minutes left. So I guess we should frame basically what our general opinion on this is and Phil's just touched on it there. Our opinion on orthotics is that you need an exit strategy. You need a plan for like what how does the orthotic fit into you getting from where you are, from whatever issues you've got going on, from pain in your feet, um, shin splints, knees, hips, back, whatever the pain is that you're experiencing in your body, and you're going to get orthotics, well, that's great, but, but what part of the puzzle does that play to get you to being able to move pain-free without orthotics? And if you don't have a plan like that, then I would be getting a second and a third opinion and working with some people that are gonna give you a plan. Yeah, so definitely, um you know, put in the comments. Let us know about your experiences with what you have them for, and you know, uh, and in your past experience, and maybe how you've you've stopped using them. Because um, we're really interested to sort of hear like the different different takes on it and different experience about what health professionals have also have also told you. And um, yeah, as I said, we'll be getting a bit more into the particulars of what you can do if you do have orthotics and you find that you do have real struggle walking barefoot. Um, so there's lots of uh, as I talked about. Uh, before when we're looking at your hips and knees, your foot has such a massive role in setting up the, um, how your, your knee health is gonna be with like your ankles uh, stabilizing and, and for your hip as well. So uh, over the week, we'll, we'll have a look at particular things you can do for your foot to give it a lot of, you know, the best strength and stability it can, which will help out your whole, you know, lower limb structure and, and into your lower back as well. Mm. Yeah, and of course, we'll, we'll give you guys uh, exercises that you can do uh, to help fix this problem. We'll show you progressions for how you can progress these exercises. So on Thursday or Friday, we'll finish up with some of the more advanced things that you can do. Um, and I would call barefoot running, I would definitely call that up on the advanced end of things that you can do, which is really, really good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And like, and just to go back to this, um, to Sarah's question there, like, yeah, I, like I personally, uh, think that you know if you can get into barefoot running and you can do it well then uh, and enjoy it then happy days but it will just be such a slow progression from first walking on grass then uh, you know jogging yeah. very short distances like you know if you're used to running 10ks like you're going to go back to running like 100 meters at a time yeah and you're gonna have to change like how you, your foot strike pattern most likely to kind yeah. of more a midfoot or forefoot and it just has to take time a long time to build up to it so yeah absolutely yeah but you know i've got one of my mates who i went to uni with he was right into um the 
the Born to Run book, which sort of talks about uh, a lot of, like that was kind of one of the books that got um, barefoot running really popular. And in there, it talks about a Mexican tribe um, that lives in the desert and they wear sandals um, and that's it. So no support whatsoever. And you know, uh, they would run just ultra, ultra marathons day after day. And, and he got pretty into it and he did the Sydney half in just those sandals. And, but you know, he really just built up slowly over time. So. Yeah. Yeah, 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 awesome. Um, well, look, great discussion. Some good things that are going to come out of uh, of this week. And as Phil said, um, if you've got any questions, please make sure you put them in the uh, in the comments section. And um, yeah, we will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in. Have a wonderful day. Health is about performance, not just body image. You better be willing to accept <laughs> what you're going to have to do to get there. We'll start focusing on movement goals, strength goals, flexibility goals. When you nail that skill, it's there forever. The body image goal doesn't get you that it's far. It's the consistency and frequency that's going to get you there. It's not the intensity. There's no shortcuts to mastery in movement. Destination doesn't change overnight, but your direction will. It's the gym is not the place to beat up the body that you hate. It's the place to build the body that you love. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image.